More than 3 million people in South Africa are affected by deadly fungi every year. The person leading the research is Professor Kaleen Poul Albertain from the University of the Free State. She's with us today. Welcome, Professor. Thank you very much. Now, please tell us more about this really scary sounding fungi. Which one is the most drug resistant? Okay, so there are a range of fungi that can um, affect people. Um, and maybe before I answer your question, I can just say not all of them are that scary. Um, <laughs> There are, the problem is they are becoming drug resistant. So at this stage, any of the fungi that can affect people can become drug resistant. And many of them are doing that. And the reason for that is because we have a limited number. There's currently only four drugs or drug classes that are used to treat fungal infection. And if you compare that to, for instance, the, the many different types of antibiotics for bacterial infections, you can start seeing the problem. So because certain um, drugs are used over and over and over again. These fungi are, are becoming drug resistant. So a common one is, for instance, Candida albicans, that is um, part of our normal uh, organisms that we carry with us. And only under certain conditions, they can become uh, disease causing, so they can cause infections. And these guys are becoming resistant to these antifungals. And then another problem is new ones coming from the environment, um, being able to then cause infections. And many of them are drug resistant. And a, and a clear example is the uh, recently emerging uh, fungus called uh, Canada auris. So that one, you have strains that is resistant to all the different classes. Now, how are these fungi spread? How do people pick them up? So, so as I said, some of them are part of our normal, what we call microbiota. So you carry them with you every day. Uh, in your intestines, in your mucous membranes, and so on, and they don't cause any problems there. They they are supposed to be there, sort of. But if they then enter from there into the bloodstream, they can become um, a problem, obviously. Others, as I said, come from the environment. So um, there's actually no way for you to avoid them. They are all around you, in the air that you breathe, in the food that you eat, in the water that you drink, and um, for most people, that's not a big problem uh, if your immune system is functioning well. But we are seeing an increased population of people that don't have a proper immune system. Um, I can talk about that in a point, mm. but those, those people are being vulnerable to these fungi that can then cause infections in them. And what about yeast contaminated water? That's another area of research. Yeah, that's something that has been emerging recently. Um, as you know, we have a lot of regulations about, for instance, drinking water um, in terms of bacterial contamination. So we have we have rules and regulations that says how many bacterial cells there may be. But we don't have something similar for fungal cells, for yeasts or filamentous fungi. And um, a lot of people are warning that this may, may lead to problems um, down the line as we continue. Uh, because we have this population that is now more susceptible to fungal infection, if you are exposing them to fungi, for instance, in drinking water, that could be a potential source of infection to, um, to these people. And we really feel that this should be regulated. Um, but obviously, in order to do that, we need to do a lot of research to try and, and, and see, is there really a correlation between drinking this water and increased uh, risk of infection? Now, if you become uh, contaminated by drinking water that has fungi in it, what what symptoms would you show? What would happen to you? What illness would you get? Yeah, so so that's one of the problems with fungal infections. The symptoms are very non-specific. So you can get different types of infections. You can get what we call a superficial infection. That is what we often refer to in layman terms as yeast infection, and a lot of women suffer from that. So. So that is a, a superficial infection. It's on the upper layers of your skin or your mucous membranes and so on. Then from there, it can then cause what we call a systemic infection. So the fungi can actually then enter the bloodstream and spread to basically any organ of the body. Um, some of them especially love the brain. But um, in those cases, you have very general symptoms initially, things like fever, uh, you might have nausea, sort of those general, something is wrong, but you're not quite sure what it is. And often if you go to the doctor at that stage, 
you will be treated for a fungal or uh, for a bacterial or a viral infection because that's the, the go-to thing. It's only after you are not responding to antibiotics because remember, um, the fungi are not killed by antibacterial antibiotics. So it's only after then that they would start looking for signs of fungal infection. I, I see that it can be pretty deadly. Um, how many people die of, of fungal infections uh, across the world every year? So um, the, the number is an estimate. So they estimate that it's around 1.7 million people every year that die from fungal infection. Um, the problem is that's probably an underestimation because there are not really any, um, it, a, a fungal infection is not a, a, a disease that is, um, that you're supposed to report that's legally required. So, and in many countries, um, especially in the poorer countries, um, there's no real records that's being kept of how many fungal infections there are, how many people die from fungal infections. So then, as I said, that's probably an underestimation. And the reason we are seeing this increase, um, in, in this is because of the increase in immune compromised people. Oh, Mm -hmm. So particularly people with, with HIV, uh, tag that's one group. Yes. That's one group that is very vulnerable and we have fungal infections that, that are specifically sort of characterized as HIV related diseases. So, uh, most of the people that, that die eventually after HIV infection die from a fungal infection. Um, things like Good the, the, the caucus that I talked about that, that loves the brain. So this is a fungus that you breathe in. So by the time you're two or three years old, you already have the fungal spores. Everybody basically has them. Um, but your immune system is able to, to keep them where they can't do any harm. And, um, if something there then changes, then they spread and they are attracted to the brain. They can cross the blood brain barrier. And then they can cause meningitis or even brain infection. And um, obviously that is not a very uh, a good situation for the patient. Uh, so those are those that specifically is a, a characteristic infection of people with HIV. But as our medical technology becomes more advanced, we are keeping premature babies alive. People become a lot older. So on both those ends of the age spectrum, you get immune compromise. You know? Oh, sorry, immune compromised people. And then also, um, people that have cancer treatment, people that get organ transplants, people with diabetes. Now with, with the COVID um, epidemic, there were a lot of co-infections. When you had COVID and the patient ended up in ICU, very serious, uh, seriously sick. And then they get, um, treated for COVID with corticosteroids. So those corticosteroids are medicines that is helping you to recover from COVID, but it also makes you more vulnerable to fungal infection. So, um, there were a lot of people in ICU that got COVID infected with fungi as well. And in those cases, unfortunately, also the, the death toll increased or your risk of, of dying increased significantly. So it sounds like many people die of diseases that are not necessarily traced back to, an, to a fungal infection, but that could have been caused by a fungal infection or exacerbated. Yeah, exacerbation of, of um, serious illness. <laughs> Why was it not a big health problem before the 1980s? So before the 1980s, um, we didn't really have antifungal drugs. So there was not that much pressure on the fungi in the environment to become resistant. Uh, the, the most commonly used antifungal drug, um, is a, was introduced around that time. We also did not use that many, uh, antifungal chemicals in agriculture because those chemicals are related to the ones we use in people. And so the fungi in the environment are becoming resistant. So that wasn't a problem. And then it, during the 1980s was when we saw the emergence of HIV and that really drove a lot of the infections, um. And, and then from there, as we are advancing in terms of medicine in general, being able to keep people in life that basically would have died before the 1980s, we are creating this population. Hmm. So the treatment is also, uh, how can I put it? It's also, uh, it's also a complicating factor. Definitely. Yeah, hospital stay, things like abdominal surgery, 
uh, being in an ICU, all those things are what we call risk factors. Now, how can the ordinary person just try and protect themselves from acquiring a fungal infection? If you if you are a healthy person, you really don't need to worry. If you are end up in an ICU, I mean the 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 big responsibility there in my in my view is with the hospital, making sure that the care that they give you um, is is as good as it can be, and then. Um, the the hospital environment, the things that they use, especially if they're using what we call indwelling devices, so they put a catheter in you or something like that, that is really one of the sources of infection in general, including fungal infection. So those things will to be properly managed. As a as a person, uh, a normal person on the street, there is unfortunately not much that you can do additional to what you're already doing. Um, Normal sanitary practices, washing your hands, making sure your water is clean, um, those kinds of things. You can, obviously, if you, if you have doubt about water, for instance, then boiling is still a, a good idea. Um, that will kill most of the, the fungi. But as I say, these, these fungi are part of our environment. You breathe in as I'm sitting here, I'm inhaling fungal spores by the million. So um, there's, there's not that much that you can do about it. Obviously, um, things like the, the fungus that goes into your brain, um, that one is associated with bird droppings and trees and so on. So keeping your general environment free of these, these things is a good idea. Thank you. That was Professor Carleen Poole-Albertain, who's leading research into fungi, deadly sometimes, and that affect over 3 million people in South Africa every year. Thank you very much, Professor.